Hey, this is Tammy Pescatelli, and you're watching News from Abroad. Say hello to my co-host, Ray Zawadi. Hey. And Colin Chamberlain. Hello. Hi, guys. So you know what we do here, uh, if you've watched it, which thank you so much. So many people have been watching, and thank you for your comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, but we do a little thing where I write a column in the Weekly World News, the world's only reliable news source, and then we talk about it here at News From Abroad and do a little shallow dive after. So you see a little mini play where we bring that column to life. Uh, and I'm ready this week. Are you ready, guys? Let's do it. Bigfoot is a deadbeat dad. Courtrooms all across the country hear child support cases every day. One parent files against the other for payment for the financial benefit of a child. When a parent gets behind in their payments or doesn't fulfill their court ordered obligations, they are in jeopardy of legal trouble. Sadly, it's not an uncommon story anymore, but a Washington state woman has a child support story that is anything but common. She claims that not only is Bigfoot the father of her daughter, but her baby daddy is a deadbeat dad. Lily Goldenfeld is the mother of a beautiful 18-month-old baby girl who Lily purports was conceived with the Yeti during a wild night of partying at Yellowstone National Park Music Festival. It was a week-long festival. My friends and I were having... <laughs> is that really what you think women sound like, Colin? <laughs> that is your problem right there. <laughs> Colin, why don't you like women? <laughs> we were... We were drinking and dancing. You are fired. You are not allowed to work <laughs> with me anymore. I'm anything. I thought it was like a southern woman like Yellowstone. I guess that's Washington State. That was oh, a man. Okay. You were still being a man. <laughs> Be a man with a high voice, if anything. <laughs> that was a vehicle. Just a My friends and I were having such a great time. Drinking and dancing and camping out. One night I was only one left awake and the campfire was dying out. This gorgeous Greek god looking guy with long dark hair just walked out of the woods and our eyes locked and the animal magnetism took over. Lily said she couldn't see the mysterious stranger clearly. She didn't have her contacts in as she was preparing for bed. And the fire was dying, so the campsite was dimly lit and smoky. It didn't matter. It was as if we had known each other our whole lives. When I asked him what his name was, he said Bigfoot. I thought it was a nickname or something. I should have known he was telling the truth because he smelled like beef jerky. <laughs> One thing led to another and nature took its course. When Lily woke up, her paramour was nowhere to be seen. Just footprints on the outside of her tent where her earthy lover must have walked away. I just thought it was so romantic. Such a romantic night, you know, the kind of night that the dreams are made of and I realized that babies are made of too. The unbelievable story has a very believable ending. Nine months later, Lily gave birth to a 18 pound, very hairy little girl. On the birth certificate, she listed the father as Bigfoot. He's the father. He didn't show up for the DNA test, but we got some scat from the woods. And it's a 99.9% .9 match. Besides the fact our daughter is a year old and can climb trees. The court system thought she was kidding when she first filed for child support, but soon issued the proper documents that would financially cover the child. The hardest part has been serving him. Apparently he has about four dozen baby mamas that can't find him. He hasn't contributed one dime towards our daughter. All these years when you hear about Bigfoot being elusive, turns out it's not because he's some mysterious legend. It's because he's trying to slip out on child support. We reached out to Bigfoot for a comment on this story, but neither he nor his representatives responded to our requests. Now, were you doing Michael Jackson? <laughs> what? 
It Who? did sound, now that you say it right, it did sound a little bit like Michael Jackson. Sounded exactly like Michael Jackson. <laughs> you sounded, you got the same. Have you, I was calling have you, so Colin, maybe, have you ever heard a woman talk? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> and then why did you, why did you get sassier? <laughs> hey, like, okay. Oh, wait, let, 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 anybody who sleeps with Bigfoot on the first night might be sassy, Ray, just to let you know. That's <laughs> she fair. might be a little, just so you know, not judging. But, I was uh, sassy because I have all this child support. <laughs> I, was, I was doing, I was being method. I'm like Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? That's yeah. close. Because <laughs> you're like, yeah, okay. You're Dan Daniel Day Daniel Lewis. Day -Louise. That's great. Like Daniel Knight Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> no one can see you in there. God. So Bigfoot, Bigfoot's a big deal, you know. Um, believe or don't believe. I mean, let's I, just well, let's refresh everybody's memory. If you don't know, Bigfoot is mythical folklore, monster type being. Maybe not a monster. Maybe just a giant animal. People, but people see it from Washington to Pennsylvania to Ohio. I mean, they've seen it and they say it screams in the woods. Some say it's a, like a bear. Some say it's like an orangutan. Uh, several have been hoaxes. There have been some pictures. You noticed I use scat because people seem to be fascinated with the poop of Bigfoot. Nah. <laughs> what I, I, I think it's just a big dude that somebody saw once that was kind of living in the woods and that's how it started. I don't believe it. It's like a creature. Okay. No. All right. I think I, I don't necessarily think it's like a big monster, but I wouldn't be surprised if like there is just sort of like a real big bear that walks around, you know, like I think there's just probably like a huge bear that, that's running around the woods. But I don't know, like the fact that if I was Bigfoot, I would start to want a little bit of the attention. I'd be like, OK, I'd like a little bit of credit. Tell people, well, you know what I always have attributed Bigfoot to? Do you remember seeing those things? And maybe one day we'll do a story and we'll talk about them. Those um, those documentaries of that family that like lived in Mexico that had hair all over their face, the werewolf. Yes. Oh, yes. I was like, what if in the 19 blah blahs, like early 1900s, you're one of those people, right? And you're embarrassed because people think you're the devil or a demon or whatever, and you can't help it. You just have hair, right? So you go live in the backwoods of the Adirondacks or the Appalachians, and then you and you 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 find some woman, and you have a whole fair, hairy family of tall, bigfoot, hairy-faced people, and you just never really... I mean, you're like Amish. You're like the Amish hairy people. That, that's that's what I was thinking. I think I think it's like a perfect storm of person. Maybe somebody that has that face, but he's also like an overgrown giant dude too. And it was Have just you seen kind the of Appalachian a... people. They're big ones, right? Hell, I'm They're related big... to some of them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, could be could be something like that. I mean, we had um, Slade Ham on one of our frighteningly funnies. A uh, very funny comic that I've done uh, some USO tours with, and he went and saw the um, the Southern Bigfoot, and and just decided he wanted to go find it. And well, they found it. Uh, he didn't get to see it, but he said he was sitting there with the Bigfoot hunter, and he felt surrounded by him. They were making noises. He's like, now, okay, maybe this guy sent his friends to make these noises and scream, but they would have had to wait for three hours, like. What friends are going to do such elaborate pranks? Now, now, do we know if Bigfoot has any, like, like attributes? Like, is he really fast? I, I'm guessing he's real strong. What do they say about him? Do we know? Lots of people say different things. Well, first of all, we know that he's tall. We know that he's hairy. It does seem like he's strong because he pulls down. Like, he even, Bigfoot, when I was a kid, became such a pop culture thing. It was so weird. He was on, like, the $6 million man. They had him on Scooby-Doo. Like, obviously, it wasn't really him. Um, yeah. But well, they, they, you have they, to clarify they things. Scale them. <laughs> you have to clarify things. Bigfoot had his SAG card is what that means. Um, you know, literally, even... In the 70s, I guess it was 1976, the FBI had a file on him because they found this clump of hair 
and they had it tested and they couldn't place it. According to some people, they say that it was just deer hair. But once the FBI opens a file on a being, like it gives it a different kind of legitimacy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if they're looking into it as a legitimate, yeah, like a, like a being, you're kind of like, okay, well, if they're taking it seriously, maybe my dumb ass should do, right? I yeah, know. it's like, I don't know, if the FBI is interested, like, that means that, like, they had to get enough complaints. Like, you know how hard it is to get, like, a stop sign put up or, like, you have neighbors that are making noise? Like, the right. number of complaints you'd have to call and make to be like, all right, I guess we need to look into this as the FBI. They declassified the Bigfoot file later on because they felt like there was not an existence of it. But who's to say there's not a wild orangutan that we don't know, or like you said, a, right. a bear that we don't know. Slade also came up, Slade Ham also said that he feels like the Bigfoot are aliens. Oh. And that's why you can't find the bodies. And that's why they're kind of mysterious. Now, some people say they have red eyes. Some people say they just are just, you know, they walk on all uh, upright, but some people said they've been on all four. So I don't know. I, I, I just, to be honest with you, whenever I go camping, I've been camping a total of three times in my life and I'm afraid of everything in the woods and I'm tough, but the woods scare me ridiculously. Have you guys been camping? Yeah. Uh, once and I'll never do it again. Cause I hate bugs and poison Ivy. We've already gotten into your poison Ivy. Yeah. Situation. I, I'm, 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 I'm not built for camping. Yeah, Just once you have that. poison ivy of the penis, I think you're finished for a while. I think. <laughs> I like how last week we just we just uh, we we beat around the bush on that one, and then today you're just like you had it on your penis. Like, well, oh. I figured it makes sense. It's a literary. Right? <laughs> that's why that's why I get paid the big bucks, which are zero. Um. <laughs> I, I was camping a couple times, and I like camping for about ten minutes, and then after you realize that like. Well, I guess I better keep that fire going so we can eat. It's not fun anymore. Like, it's fun to sit around a bonfire and have some beers and maybe grill a hot dog. But then you're like, oh, we're doing this for three days and we won't be showering. Yeah, you like you it. just like breaks. You just like going outside for 10 minutes and you're like, all right, I'm done. You go back inside. Yeah, I want to go camping where somebody sort of does everything for me. Or well, what would be great is if they had a hotel that you could go outside, have a hot dog. And then go back inside. You want to go glamping. That's what you want to do. That's what uh -oh. you want to do. Like, but here's what I want to tip is there was a show that I was addicted to for a while. My son and I, a couple of years ago, called Fat Guys in the Woods. And it was on the Weather Channel of all things. And they would go out with this, uh, these three or four friends. I can't remember how many because every episode is different. Would go out in the woods with this guy, Creek Stewart, who's this crazy outdoor long haired crocodile Dundee looking guy. And they would, they would start out in the woods. They'd each get one thing. Maybe it's a thermos of water, whatever. You'd get one thing. That's it. And then you're there. he makes it, he makes your, your shelter and he helps you get food the first day. Then the second day you have to set traps in order to eat. Well, if you don't catch anything, you don't eat. Uh, the third day he leaves and you have to make your own shelter and find your own food. And then he comes back. And then the fourth day you split. So we'd all have to go find, fix our own huts and our own food. And the winner wins his knife. The three of us should do that. I would, I would lose. I'm sure I would not pay attention the first day while he's doing all the stuff. And then I'd be screwed. No, I think that we have to do that. Well, the <laughs> scariest part is, is that bears, like there's so many things to do to make sure you don't attract wildlife, you know, bears. Like if, if you bring food, you have to hang it up high. If you actually do catch your food, like that's what happened in the Revenant. The bear was tracking them for food. Yeah. And, you know, it's also like, I don't know, like, I don't know the difference between poisonous and what isn't poisonous i don't know if something's clean like i'm not gonna give myself dysentery because i'm like man did that guy say i could drink from that stream or not like am i <laughs> supposed is this like 
I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think I'd be very good at it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's like when somebody is like, definitely don't drink from that stream, and then the next day you're like, wait, did he say definitely or definitely don't? <laughs> Damn it! Well, I knew it was important. I just didn't know it was fifty fifty. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I had to buy. There's a special filter straw that you you buy. You guys need to get this because we might be in a Marigetan at any time. So. <laughs> You need to get you need to get there's a special filter straw that you can drink out of a puddle and it immediately filters the water for you. If you ever find yourself camping in a drinking a glass of water right at the what are you Pavlov? <laughs> it's like oh my god, I said it. You just have to drink. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, you're so suggestive, my sweet girl. Uh, you're just like an. Whatever I say, okay. And if you ever find yourself standing up, taking your hat off, I mean, you just, uh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've often hypnotized. Com. Bonnie McFarland has an amazing, amazing joke that I'll never do justice. Everybody, you should go look it up. But it was a, it was on dating a hypnotist. She was like, I didn't, uh, I didn't mind dating him. I just didn't like doing the dishes in the nude, clucking like a chicken or something like. That. <laughs> Something like that. So in doing this podcast, we've talked about a lot of things that we never really talked about in open society before. Has it brought in your mind you think a little bit more like on this kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think even in this episode alone, I kind of got flipped a little on Bigfoot. I'm entertaining them now. Yeah, I think I'll entertain them. I think it's like, like the evidence has to be like, no matter what, if someone believes in Bigfoot, you will never convince them otherwise. So it's like, mm. Mm, well, maybe they have a reason. Like, I definitely am more like, yeah, that could that could be true. Well, I'll tell you, th this here's my story. One time I was trying to do some shows in uh, Oregon, <clears throat> on, the, on the coast of Oregon, but my flight didn't get in. It was late, so it didn't get in until midnight. Now, from the Portland airport to the coast of Oregon is about a three- three and a half hour drive, depending. So the other comic was so cool, waited for me so we could drive there. We're driving and we're driving through. If you've never been to the North Pacific Northwest, it's a whole different animal. I mean, the trees are a million years old. There's moss on the roofs of the places. It really looks, it looks like twilight everywhere. Like there could be vampires, there could be Bigfoot. If Bigfoot exists, Bigfoot's there. And I will tell you this, that, Anytime you say uh, anything about Bigfoot, someone will always come up to you after the show and be like, yeah, I seen it. And he's scarier than the actual Bigfoot. But all of a sudden we were almost to the casino and there was like this cottage in the middle of the woods, right? And I saw, I'm telling you, it's three o'clock in the morning. And there was a man digging with a shovel by this cottage. And I was like, oh my God, what is that? And the comic started to slow down and I was hit him. I'm like, go, go, go. And he's like, what's wrong? I go, anybody who's digging a hole at three o'clock in the morning, it's not for the good. Like, yeah, that's not a nice hole. <laughs> <laughs> then he was talking about it on stage. He was like, oh, Tammy, you hit me the other night because we saw a man digging a hole at three o'clock in the morning. And I, I got on stage and I go, no, I didn't. I didn't see anything. He might, I was asleep. So if you're <laughs> here and you're the killer, he saw it all. I was asleep. So it wasn't Bigfoot I saw, but the woods are scary enough on their own. Oh, that is, scares me more than Bigfoot is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or somebody coming through and like trying to wear my skin, you know? Like I, I, I that red, like, Sort of like those deep woods, <clears throat> like like bayou deliverance sort of thing. That mm. frightens me. Yeah, that's very frightening. And that, that's to me what I think truly is Bigfoot is. I think it's just kind of, it's a human with a genetic anomaly. And, you know, I mean, we don't know everything that happens with extra chromosomes or this or that. So, I mean, mm. that's what I think, fellas. What do you guys think? I don't, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think you would do if he, if he rolled up on you when you were camping? Same thing I'd always do run. <laughs> like, yeah. I am not, I am not a stand around, be scared type. Like I'll be scared as I'm running. 
I start throwing stuff. I mean, even right now, my my son's friends keep trying to scare me because they're at that age or 12, 13. And I'm the mom that always lets them over and they always try to wait around the corner. And it's funny because I've punched about five of them and I have to call their mom and be like, listen, your kid tried to scare me and I punched him in the face. I didn't do it on purpose because I didn't know his kid. But if he's around the corner and he's scaring me, someone's getting clocked. And then they oh, stop scaring me. I'm I'm 31 and I still try scaring my mom. I don't know what it is. Does she hit you? Because I feel bad because there's something wrong. But I grew up with boys and I was on the road all these years all by myself. So my first instinct is to hit and I can't <laughs> stop it. <laughs> like I can't. There, there was this girl when I, uh, I used to work with. She worked part time at a haunted house. And she used to consistently come in with bruises on her face because the certain part she jumped out, men would like grown men would punch her in the face as a knee jerk reaction. And she would always get hit. I was like, dude, jump out of a different spot. Like she was always all beat or up. had a different job. How good is that haunted house paying that she can get clocked in the face twice a shift? Like or work, or work at the hot chocolate stand. Nobody's getting yeah. punched at the hot chocolate what stand. What a great cover for an abusive boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he scared so, me. That's so Nothing much funny about language. that. I'm just saying. So, well, that's it, guys. I think we covered it all. Can you hear me? No, that's got to be on your end. Then. Are you on mute on your phone? Are you on mute in your computer? Now I can't hear you. You see the cat tree? Of the kitty litter? Yeah, that's my studio. I don't think FaceTime lets you record. Well, I'm trying to record from my camera. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me today in Frighteningly Funny is a good friend of mine who has been holding a secret that's been passed down in her family for generations, but we were not familiar. Uh, please welcome the hilarious Adam May. Hey, Tammy Pescatelli. What's going on, my friend? How are you? You should have called me sooner. I've been watching your stuff. Why, and thank you. Funny, and I talked I talk to um, Larry cable guy and and i'm like mad that you didn't call wet trash he's redneck but i'm white trash well i'm on it oh, look, look at my cat he wants to get in it look oh they look how beautiful he is look yeah. how pretty he is explain to me how your family and bigfoot are connected okay my great 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 i believe that's the, the greats um my great 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 grandpa smoky mountains he was out hunting and um, uh, he uh, shot this animal, thought it was like, uh, I don't know what he thought it was, maybe. And, um, uh, it, but it was all furry and it turned out to be Bigfoot. <gasps> so. Um, the real uh, Bigfoot. The real Bigfoot. Yeah. There, there's more than one Bigfoot. Yeah, you don't seem shocked. Right. No. Well, first off, back, great, great, great. Um, cause, cause here's the thing. He field dressed him, which means gutted him and pulled him down the mountain and my, my kin ate him. Uh, your family now, ate Bigfoot. No, not me personally. Um, but, but your blood, your, Hey, hey, you know what? You city people judge. Look, to country <laughs> people, meat is meat. And, but my papa or great, 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 uh, was, was smart enough to uh, cut off his big toe. So we have the big toe. I would love to show you the big toe, but uh, I got a, I'll send, I'll, I'm going to send you a picture of the toe. But I got 10, 10 kids in our family, and the toe gets passed around. And um, it, next year is my year, 20, uh, 21 is my year to have the toe. So, and, but here's, here's what's wrong. I called my brother cause I know uh, I wanted to tell you this story. And I said, look, I need the toe. And he goes, no, you get the toe at Christmas. And I said, no, I want the toe now. Tim Pascat, Tim Pascat, tell me. And he's gone. He's, he thought you were like a lasagna. <laughs> um, he's like, what's a Tim Pascatelli? 
that sounds good. And I said, no, it's a friend of mine. Can't eat her, but we did eat Bigfoot. And we're our kin. We not, we're not going to get together because of COVID. So I don't think he's going to relinquish the toe. He's holding that toe over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Say, as them old and new, news from a 